In the first two chapters of the book, we learned how our culture shapes our language and how that language shapes our point of view of who we are. In the third chapter of the book, we gained our first agreement, our first tool, how to be impeccable with that word. In the fourth chapter, we gained our second agreement, don't take things personally. And in this, the fifth chapter, we will gain the third tool, the third agreement, don't make assumptions. And with that, let us begin the fifth agreement, a practical guide to self-mastery, a Toltec wisdom book, chapter five, truth or fiction, the third agreement, don't make assumptions. For centuries, even millennia, humans have believed that a conflict exists in the human mind, a conflict between good and evil, but this isn't true. Good and evil are just the result of the conflict because the real conflict is between the truth and lies. Perhaps we should say that all conflict is the result of lies because the truth has no conflict at all. The truth doesn't need to prove itself. It exists whether we believe it or not. Lies only exist if we create them and they only survive if we believe in them. Lies are just a distortion of the word, a distortion of the meaning of a message, and that distortion is in the reflection, the human mind. Lies aren't real. They're our creation, but we give them life and make them real in the virtual reality of our mind. When I was a teenager, my grandfather told me this simple truth, but it took years for me to really understand it because I was always thinking, how can we know the truth? I was using symbols to try to understand the truth when the real truth is that the symbols have nothing to say about the truth. The truth existed long before the humans created the symbols. As artists, we're always distorting the truth with symbols, but that's not the problem. As we said before, the problem is when we believe that distortion, because some lies are innocent and others are deadly. Let's consider how we can use the word to create a story, a superstition, about a chair. What do we know about a chair? We can say that a chair is made of wood or metal or cloth, but we're just using symbols to express a point of view. The truth is, is that we don't really know what the object is, but we can use the word with all of our authority to deliver a message to ourselves and to everyone around us. This chair is ugly. I hate that chair. The message is already distorted, but this is just the beginning. We can say, it's a stupid chair, and I think that whoever sits in that chair might become stupid too. I think we have to destroy the chair because if someone sits in the chair and it falls apart, that person will fall and break a hip. Oh yes, the chair is evil. Let's create a law against the chair so that everyone knows that it's a danger to society. From now on, it's prohibited to get near the evil chair. If we deliver this message, then whoever receives the message and agrees with the message starts to become afraid of the evil chair. Very soon, there are people who are so afraid of the chair that they start having nightmares about the chair. They become obsessed with the evil chair, and of course, they have to destroy the chair before it destroys them. Do you see what we can do with the word? The chair is just an object. It exists, and that's the truth. But the story we create about the chair is not the truth. It's a superstition, a figment of our imagination. It's a distorted message, and that message is the lie. If we don't believe the lie, no problem. If we believe the lie and try to impose that lie on other people, it can lead to what we call evil. Of course, what we call evil has many levels, depending on our own personal power. Some people can lead the whole world into a great war where millions of people die. They are tyrants. There are tyrants all around the world who invade other countries and destroy their people because the tyrants believe the lies. Now we can easily understand why there is a conflict in the human mind, and only in the human mind. 
the virtual reality because it doesn't exist in the rest of nature. There are billions of humans who distort all these symbols in their heads and deliver distorted messages. That's what really happened to humanity. I think that answers why all the wars exist, why all the injustice and abuse exists, why the dream that we call hell exists in the world of humans. Hell is nothing but a dream full of lies. Remember, our dream is controlled by what we believe, and what we believe could be truth or could be fiction. The truth leads us to our authenticity, to happiness. Lies lead us to limitations in our lives, to suffering and drama. Whoever believes in the truth lives in heaven. Whoever believes in lies sooner or later lives in hell. We don't have to die to go to heaven or hell. Heaven is all around us, just as hell is all around us. It is a point of view, a state of mind. It's obvious that lies have been running every show in our head. Humans create the lies, and then the lies control the humans. But sooner or later, the truth arrives, and the lies cannot survive the presence of the truth. All right, everybody keep your shirt on. This is an example coming up. This is not an insult to any flat turfers. Remembering, this is a practice in not taking things personally. Centuries ago, people believed that the earth was flat. Some said that elephants were supporting the earth, and that made them feel safe. Good. Now we know that the earth is flat. Well, now we know that it isn't flat. The belief that the earth was flat was considered the truth, and almost everybody agreed, but did it make it true? One of the biggest lies we hear at the present time is nobody's perfect. It's a great excuse for our behavior, and almost everybody agrees, but is it true? On the contrary, every human in the world is perfect, but we've been hearing this lie since we were children, and as a consequence, we keep judging ourselves against an image of perfection that this culture holds. We keep searching for this perfection, and in our search, we find that everything in the universe is perfect except you. The sun is perfect, the stars are perfect, the planets are perfect, but when it comes to humans, nobody's perfect. The truth is, is that everything in creation is perfect, including the humans. If we don't have the awareness to see this truth, it's because we are blinded by the lie. You may say, what about someone who is physically disabled? Is that person perfect? Well, according to what you know, that person may be imperfect. But is what you know the truth? Who says that what we call a disability or a disease isn't perfect? Everything about us is perfect, including any disability or disease that we may have. Someone with a learning difficulty is perfect. Someone born without a finger or an arm or an ear is perfect. Someone with a disease is perfect. Only perfection exists, and that awareness is another important step in our evolution. To say otherwise is not to have the awareness of what we are. And it's not enough to say that we're perfect. We need to believe that we are perfect. If we believe ourselves to be imperfect, the lie gathers more lies for support. And together, all those lies repress the truth and guide the dream that we're creating for ourselves. Lives are nothing but superstitions, and I can assure you that we live in a world of superstition. But again, are we aware of it? Just imagine waking up tomorrow morning in 14th century Europe knowing what you presently know, believing what you believe today, imagine what those people would think of you, how they would judge you. They would put you on trial for taking a bath every day. Everything you believe would threaten what they believe. How long would it take before they accused you of being a witch? They would torture you, make you confess to being a witch, and finally kill you because of their fear of your beliefs. So maybe we sh shouldn't go back there. That's me. Oh, 
Okay, they would torture you, make you confess to being a witch, and finally kill you because of their fear of your beliefs. You can easily see that those people lived their lives immersed in their superstitions. Hardly anything they believed was true, and you can easily see that because of what you believe today. But those people were not aware of their superstitions. Their way of life was completely normal for them. They didn't know any better because they never learned anything else. That made it their reality. Then perhaps what you believe about yourself is just as full of superstition as the beliefs of those people long ago. Just imagine if humans from seven or eight centuries in the future could see what most of us believe about ourselves today. The way that most of us relate to our own body is still barbaric, though not as much as 700 years ago. Our body is completely loyal to us, but we judge our body and abuse our body. We treat it as if it's the enemy when it's our only ally. Our society places a lot of importance on being attractive according to the images we are programmed with in the media, on television, in movies, in fashion magazines, in ads, everything that we see. If we believe that we are not attractive enough according to those images, then we believe a lie. And we are using the word against ourselves, against the truth, when we tell ourselves that we are not beautiful. The people in control of the media tell us what to believe, how to dress, what to eat, and they manipulate humans like puppets, which means in whatever way they want to shape you. If they want us to hate someone, they spread gossip, and the lies work their magic. When we stop being puppets, it's obvious that our lives have been guided by lies and superstitions. Imagine what future humans would think of our superstitions. If they believed in the perfection of everything in creation, including every human, would we crucify them for their beliefs? What is the truth and what is the lie? Once again, awareness is so important because the truth doesn't come with words, with knowledge, but lies do. And there are billions of lies. Humans believe so many lies because we're not aware. We ignore the truth or we just don't see the truth. When we are domesticated, we accumulate a lot of knowledge. And all of that knowledge is just like a wall of fog that doesn't allow us to perceive the truth, what really is. We only see what we want to see. We only hear what we want to hear. Our belief system is just like a mirror that only shows us what we believe. In our development, as we grow throughout our lives, we learn so many lies that the whole structure of our lives becomes very complicated. And we make it even more complicated because we think and we believe in what we think. We make the assumption that what we believe is the truth. And we never stop to consider that our truth is a relative truth, a virtual truth. Usually it's not even close to any kind of truth, but it's the closest we can get without awareness. This takes us to the third agreement. Don't make assumptions. Making assumptions is just looking for trouble because most assumptions are not the truth, they're fiction. One big assumption we make is that everything in our virtual reality is the truth. Another big assumption we make is that everything in everyone else's virtual reality is also the truth. Well, now you know that none of the virtual realities are the truth. Using our awareness, we can easily see all the assumptions we make. We can see how easy it is to make them. Humans have a powerful imagination, very powerful. And there are so many ideas and stories that we can imagine. We listen to the symbols talking in our head. We start imagining what other people are doing, what they're thinking, what they're saying about us. And we dream things up in our imagination. We invent a whole story that's only truth for us, but we believe it. One assumption leads to another assumption 
we jump to conclusions, and we take our story very personally. Then we blame the other people, and we usually start gossiping to try to justify our assumptions. Of course, by gossiping, a distorted message becomes even more distorted. Making assumptions and then taking them personally is the beginning of hell in this world. Almost all of our conflicts are based on this, and it's easy to understand why. Assumptions are nothing more than lies that we are telling ourselves. This creates a big drama for nothing, because we don't really know if something is true or not. Making assumptions is just looking for drama when there's no drama happening. And if drama is happening in someone else's story, so what? It's not your story, it's someone else's story. Be aware that almost everything you tell yourself is an assumption. If you're a parent, you know how easy it is to make assumptions about your children. It's midnight, your daughter isn't home yet, she went out to dance, you thought she would be home by now. You start imagining the worst. You start making assumptions. Oh, what if something has happened to her? Maybe I should call the police. There are so many things you can imagine and you create a whole drama of possibilities in your head. Ten minutes later, your daughter arrives home with a big smile. When the truth arrives and all the lies are dispelled, you realize that you were simply torturing yourself for nothing. Don't make assumptions. If not taking anything personally gives you immunity in the interaction that you have with other people, then not making assumptions gives you immunity in the interaction that you have with yourself, with your voice of knowledge or what we call thinking. Making assumptions is all about thinking. We think too much and thinking leads to assumptions. Just thinking what if can create a huge drama in your life. Every human can think a lot, and thinking brings fear. We have no control over all that thinking, all those symbols that we distort in our head. If we just stop thinking, we no longer try to explain anything to ourselves, and this keeps us from making assumptions. Humans have a need to explain and justify everything. We have a need for knowledge, and we make assumptions to fulfill our need to know. We don't care whether the knowledge is true or not, truth or fiction. We believe 100% in what we believe, and we go on believing it, just because having knowledge makes us feel safe. There are so many things that the mind cannot explain. We have all of those questions that need answers. But instead of asking questions when we don't know something, we make all sorts of assumptions. If we just ask questions, we don't have to make assumptions. It's always better to ask and be clear. If we don't make assumptions, we can focus our attention on the truth, not on what we think is the truth. Then we see life the way it is, not the way we want to see it. As we shall see, when we don't believe our own assumptions, the power of our belief that we invest in them returns to us. When we recover all of the energy that we invested in making assumptions, we can use that energy to create a new dream, our personal heaven. Don't make assumptions.